Dear audience, welcome to the show Power Chat. In today's episode, we'll be discussing on vocational training and skill development programs. Joining me today is Mr. Bal Mukunda Neopani, Acting Team Leader, Employment Fund of the Helveta Swiss Inter Corporation Nepal. Please allow me to welcome him. Welcome to the show, Mr. Neopani. Thank you. How have you Thank been? You. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how do you analyze the Helvetas uh, Swiss Inter Corporation's uh, presence in Nepal? The development support uh -huh. coming to Nepal, it's mm -hmm. already been more than six decades. Yeah. Uh -huh. You are leading, yeah. you are assisting one mm -hmm. of the major projects, uh -huh. Implement Fund. Yeah. Could you shed light on the major changes yeah. that have taken place in Nepal due to presence of Helvetas? Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, Elvitas Nepal was uh, yes, initiated its program uh, in Nepal since 1956. Uh, and then we have already celebrated the 60th year in Nepal uh, last year. Uh, it has mainly uh, you know, focused on the rural economy upliftment uh, and then uh, rural infrastructure development. Uh, water resource management, uh, skill and employment, uh, you know, training and upliftment of the economic, uh, uh, yes, development of the people, uh, especially from the marginalized and disadvantaged communities. Up to as uh, you know that uh, trail biz uh, of Nepal, yes, that that was the first initiation of the Alvita Swiss Inter Corporation Nepal. Uh, it started actually from the rural infrastructure through this intervention or trail support program. This means uh, the support yeah. has now reached to all districts of this country. Yeah, it, it, it has covered uh, almost more than 70 districts in all. Uh, it has, uh, yes, almost uh, more than 6,800 6, trail mm -hmm. has been constructed and uh, Yes, agriculture for the agriculture economy, uh, you know that uh, it has, uh, yes, this, uh, it has intervened especially in the uh, far west and midwest regions, uh, uh, do you know, the irrigation canals uh, and then this uh, water collection, do you know, that's uh, pond. Well, Mr. Neopani, pond. what is the response from the public, uh, especially that of the overall uh, Swiss Inter Corporation in Nepal, what is the participation level? Yeah, actually since the principle of Helvetas is go to the people, work with the people and then plan uh, yes, uh, work, uh, together with the people uh, and uh, that, is, that is what the motto of this uh, Helvetas. That's why uh, the people's perception so far uh, we have found very good uh, uh, and then they are uh, very uh, impressed because this is the Swiss modality also, uh, working through the you know people and for the people. Uh, That's how, why how do you how do you partner with the organization? Could you also shed light on the partnerships? Yeah, partners uh, regarding the partnerships. Yeah, for the first time, do you know? Uh, perhaps uh, in in case of Nepal, for the first time, we mobilize local uh, non-governmental organizations since 1985. That, uh, that was the first initiation uh, uh, done by the Helvetas uh, in Nepal, uh, especially in the, you know, in uh, uh, the uh, construction process of the trail bridge. Um, that was done. Uh, and then uh, we select the partners, uh, actually local partners in that sense, local partners and we were, we are very, yes, uh, you know, adopted uh, with the uh, with the local environment, uh, where which is very familiar, and then people of the local community like uh, uh, the organization, um, uh, like that non-governmental organization, and even CBOs, uh, community-based organization. Uh, we mobilize them through th uh, yes, uh, we partner with them and mobilizing the local social mobilizers. Uh, well, well, yeah. Mr. Nepane, I'm coming to. Uh, uh, the project that you are leading as yeah. acting team leader, uh, Employment Fund. Could you tell us ab yes. about uh, the fund or this program? Thank you. Actually, uh, this is what uh, 
in Nepal, if you see technical education and vocational training itself uh, is uh, the new intervention. Uh, since uh, you know the, that is there is fluctuation of the uh, the, the practices. Uh, sometimes uh, you know because of the intervention uh, or initiatives uh, came out. If, if you see the school level uh, education, uh, uh, sometimes the vocational education systems comes uh, that, that the um, and that was replaced by technical school system. Yeah, and then that sort of initiation uh, led by the government has been frequently changed, but still, uh, you know, until the new education system plan was initiated in 1971, the, the, the no, you know, particular ed uh, vocational education system was uh, established. Uh, but after 1980s only when Council for Technical Education and Vocational Training yeah, that, uh, that was established in 1989 and before that, uh, uh, that uh, under the Ministry of Education, uh, the, the, the uh, directorate was there uh, under which this, uh, some of the trade schools. How, how is your project supporting these all government yeah. initiatives here in Nepal? Yeah, 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 uh, yes, in this context, what happened, you know, um, mostly these uh, trade school or institution based uh, tra training school, they produce, you know, this uh, supply based, uh, you know, uh, tra uh, the training, uh, the graduates, uh, who, which did not uh, link with the employment market. Yeah, employment market because the requ requirement of the industries was uh, one particular skill whereas they were you know the institution based system training system that they produce the curricula uh, the traditional curricula which is not updated uh, based on the uh, demand of the industries that's why there was huge gap between the uh, skill gain through the training institute and skill required to the uh, you know, industries. In order to bridge that gap, employment fund, this uh, project was initiated, realizing the need of the bridging this gap. Uh, and then in 2008, it was initiated and project was steered by the, uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, actually planning, planning division director uh, is the chairperson of the steering committee of employment fund. So basically you are partnering with the uh, government, government the, uh, yeah. ministry of education. Ministry of education, yeah, you are right. Uh, ministry of education is the uh, lead person, uh, yeah, a lead of the steering committee. And then um, uh, where we represent the national planning commission uh, uh, member and uh, uh, and then there is representation of uh, ministry of uh, in finance and other different donor agencies that is uh, th that that's could, could you tell us the major uh, activities or program interventions that have taken place during last seven or eight years yes project thank, has you. Started. thank you that's why in order to bridge the gap as i said before we designed the program in order to address the need of the people who are you know deprived from the mainstreaming you know this uh, training and education and um, and who are economically very poor they don't have access of training and then uh, those uh, who are economically poor as well as socially marginalized in order to address the need of those people and to uplift the economic standard of those people we designed the training program especially uh, yes, based on the demand of the market. So first our requirement was that uh, actually we worked through the uh, private sector training and employment service providers and our working modality is that we adopt this uh, outcome based financing approach to the partners. We didn't pay for the training only for the activities. Rather, we pay for the outcome. The regional, uh, they show to yes, they have to prove that uh, that the trained graduates are in the employment. This is this is the focus, and then, in order to 
include the people from the marginalized community and uh, actually women, yes, who are, uh, yes, and marginalized people. What we do is we adopt, you know, discriminated pricing system. Uh, well, this, what is that? Yeah, that is that, yeah, system. means uh, in order to include those marginalized, uh, do you know, uh, uh, the, the people from the marginalized community like women and other discriminated people, we you know, uh, we pay the partners if they could be able to include them uh, in the training. So yeah, th this is a kind of uh, positive discrimination. The positive discrimination, yeah, that is the positive discrimination we can say. So that pricing system is also linked with the, with the inclusion. Yeah, if they, they are able to include the women, they pay high incentive because we pay not only the training cost but also incentive to the partners since the private sector partner they have to invest for the training by themselves and later on we pay for the outcome that's why uh, in this way we are able to include more than 50 percent women in the training that is yeah and then since they, are, they should have they are the, our partner organizations should link the graduate with the employment market so uh, while proposing the training, they go to the uh, industry, employment market, and then find out the what is the demand of the market, rather than what are the available curriculum with CTVT and other everywhere. So they they themselves bridge the gap in order to get more incentive, more yeah. Because, well, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Neopane, it's not a long time though. Uh, the employment fund. A program has been started here yeah. in Nepal, but it's not a short time as well. A little eight years it is, gone. Yeah, yeah. How do you measure the impact of uh, this project mm -hmm. in relation to you are referring to women's empowerment, yeah. marginalized communities empowerment? Yeah. Yeah. What is the impact level? Mm -hmm. Do you see yeah. uh, the target uh, of your project engaging? Mm -hmm. demanding their rights with the uh, state agencies in terms of employment opportunities mm -hmm. or their participation in the programs yeah. uh, that of the vocational and skill development trainings mm -hmm. yes yes thank you yes actually what uh, what if we sh uh, if we talk about the impact of the uh, do you know the training program that we have designed and that we have implemented within this uh, eight years time period we can say that yes, we, we are able to be the role model. Um, yes, in the sector of this vocational training, this is yes. I, I'm claiming this because uh, do you know this outcome-based financing approach that I'm talking about that has been now adopted by the other government project and other international projects too this outcome based financing approach and this is uh, has become one of the major approach of other donor agencies to work uh, in the sector of uh, this uh, vocational training not only that this market led approach or that uh, and this rma we used to say rapid market appraisal tool that we use to assess the demand of the market uh, that has been adopted by other many you know, projects and international agencies also. We have, we have uh, you know, uh, back stopped uh, to the other projects in this regard. For example, this uh, event project under Ministry of Education, Enhanced Vocational Education and Training Project, that, that is run by the Ministry of Education. Uh, yes, our training modality our online database system because uh, that, that uh, in order to avoid the dupl duplication of the training and, uh, we have created one online database and uh, we have uh, the good collaboration with the other major projects like uh, skill development project that means you go beyond yeah. uh, government partnerships maybe there are organizations at the private or yeah. ngo sectors yeah, right. uh, conducting same sort of uh, same programs or yeah. activities so that database how do you partner with them yeah y yes that's what i am talking about actually for the event project whatever database system we develop 
that was transferred to them. Besides that monitoring system, we have very good uh, result based monitoring system that has also been transferred to the project. And then uh, STP, actually these are the major, uh, you know, three, yes, uh, three uh, big projects that, that are uh, implemented in Nepal. And we have good collaboration. Before that, that uh, USAID funded AG, uh, the EIG project was also there. We had also collaboration with them. And in order to avoid the duplication, yes, we had that uh, sim uh, same database system where uh, the database was linked within the project. And if the, 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 the trainees has already got uh, you know, training from employment fund, the, the, that, that cannot be enrolled in the database of the event project. That could be the program's name, Employment Fund. Yeah, it looks like that the uh, activities are designed in such a way that provides employment to unemployed youths yes. or any other communities. Yeah. Do you have any segment on, you know, ensuring or providing or facilitating the process of employment generating activities? Yes, that is what the focus. Sorry, yeah, uh, perhaps I forgot to mention. Actually, its establishment was uh, first. It was uh, initiated with the uh, aim that this will be the fund of the nation, where every donor agency, yes, will uh, yes uh, will give certain don amount, grant amount, and then uh, donor agency and even the government, even the private sector, yes, will invest on it, and then this will be the fund to mobilize for the. Uh, you know, unemployed to, to train the unemployed youth and make them sellable on the job market. But uh, you know, later on, because of uh, because it was not uh, the, the well developed as uh, it was envisioned at that time. That's why uh, it, it, it was envisioned. Later on, what happened? Mm, uh, at, at least we started with the fund of the uh, defeat and STC and World Bank, three major donors were there. And then uh, we trained within the six uh, years of period, uh, 100,000 of the people, unemployed youth, and then make them employed. More than 73% of the graduates were, were gainfully employed. Gainfully employed means we had certain threshold, um, that, that is the minimum wage of the government, uh, that should be do you know maintain well, the, the monthly income yes uh, monthly income against the minimum wage set by the government that we used to verify uh, the income of the uh, graduate and then those who are met the, the, were able to meet uh, the that threshold you know uh, yes they are called gainfully employed graduate so 73 percent were the gainfully employed graduates well mr neopani you are presenting with very impressive figures yeah. and uh, it seems like uh, uh, the project or program is addressing the issues of uh, unemployment yeah. uh, of vocational trainings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. How do you measure uh, impact in terms of the you know uh, the monitoring and evaluation? Often there is criticism yeah. that resources are not properly utilized, mm -hmm. or uh, the programs or activities do not reach out to the needy ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what do you have to say on this criticism? Thank you. Yes, this is a uh, yes. This is the criticism. Not only criticism. This is the fact also in many cases. Uh, why? Because many you know training institution. We have seen that uh, once they conduct training for the people, then their work is over. They don't care whether these uh, trained graduates are uh, you know employed in the market. Either they have a link with the job market or not. Then they don't care their work is their responsibility is over after completing the training activity based training. what about the employment but, fund but yeah but we employment fund focus not to the activities rather we focus to the outcome the result that's why we don't pay for the activities we don't pay for the completion of the training rather we pay for the outcome our partner achieved means uh, that if our graduates are employed, then only we pay. That's why, uh, do you know, uh, 
Yes, yes. So our we have very robust monitoring system within the uh, project. Uh, we have different uh, regional monitoring you know, unit where our experienced uh, monitors, yes, uh, the monitoring and evaluation uh, team, they are placed, and then they monitor not only uh, yeah from the very beginning before uh, starting the training. Yes, then, you know, there's a uh, pre-training monitoring, during training monitoring, and post-training monitoring, and employment verification of the uh, during three-month employment and even the six-month employment. So there are these are the milestones uh, of the employment verification and monitoring, training monitoring, and th that that is the system that could, we have. Could done. you also tell us what are the benefited persons? Yeah, doing. Mm -hmm. What are the major employment opportunities that have been resulted from the intervention of your project? Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, yes, from the verification uh, at the beginning, we have found that in, in an average, 73 percent of the uh, total graduate are employed in the market. Out of them, do you know, around 25 percent are self-employed, means that they have started the enterprise of their own. And uh, we used to conduct this tracer study also after two years uh, gap of the training period. You know, the, yes. Uh, and then that tracer study report also showed that um, even after the two years completion of the training, 68% uh, training graduates were in the employment. And uh, the, that this indicated that uh, do you know this uh, their income level has been doubled within two years those uh, were getting 6,000 at the completion of the training they were found receiving 12,000 after two years per, in, per month income it means in this way uh, that the impact has been shown on the earning level of the graduates beside that uh, uh, it, it was also found that uh, those uh, the 25 percent of the uh, graduate were self-employed at the beginning after completion of the training after two years period you know the 40 percent of the graduates were found self-employed means starting their enterprise of their one means uh, after certain interval of the training they, they were interested to start the business of their one that is on another uh, industry planning. Well, Mr. Yeah. Neopani, uh, we are coming to the end of the show. Yeah. Finally and very quickly, could you tell us uh, the Employment Fund's vision on the future of work uh, in relation to addressing the problems uh, in employment sector, uh, especially that of the vocational training, very quickly. Okay, thank you. Uh, since this skill training and employment, that part was uh, uh, over since the donor you know, defeat and uh, STC, uh, you know that the, the project was uh, phased out after 15 June. Then uh, in April of 2015, as uh, you know that uh, the disaster occurred in Nepal, and now our focus has become uh, to produce the construction sector and you know uh, the skilled human resource. And we produce the mason carpenter that required for the to facilitate the reconstruction process of the government. So uh, that will be continue for some years. Uh, up to now, we have the mandate, the the, the project mandate of uh, until 2018 January. Uh, so uh, we are trying to uh, yes uh, yeah, within this uh, one and a half years, we are also able to do you know give one model you know model uh, training model in reconstruction sector also because we we adopt this on-site training model in construction where the you know affected household has been selected during the training period and two of the affected household are reconstructed within the training period of 50 days so that result is also achieved within the training period uh, this model 
has been proved as the you know he has been has been liked by many other stakeholders as a result this nra national reconstruction authority has also applied this model as on the job training model and from this year onward they are you know those who are you know conducting this type of training they have to uh, you know, yes uh, adopt this policy this uh, training well, model well mr neopani yeah. Uh, it was pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Dear audience, time now to wrap up the show. Keep watching us. See you next week. Namaste.